We're welcoming you to the first Cedarville University live tour. I'm Mark Womack, and I'm the Sports Information Director here at the University, and alongside is Jim Clark, the Assistant SID here with us with the Yellow Jackets, and we're going to be pleased to take you on an aerial tour of the outdoor athletic facilities and inter- some of the intramural facilities that we have at Cedarville. And uh, Jim and I have been blessed to be here at the University for a few years, so we've visited a few campuses and. I think our viewers are going to find out, Jim, that the facilities we have here at Cedarville in many respects are second to none. Well, we've been here a total of 61 years between (laughs) the two of us. That's a trivial fact right there. 37 for you, 24 for me. But as we sit here on the baseball field down the first baseline, it's just a gorgeous afternoon. We hope you can enjoy this first ever video uh, aerial tour of our athletic facilities. We're going to be showing you some drone footage from this uh, aerial tour and this facility right here the baseball venue was opened in 2000 and it was built under the direction of then athletic director pete reese and you'll still see pete around he was born and raised right here in cedarville when i say built i mean hands-on built the irrigation system the whole nine yards he and his brother gene put in a lot of time with this and his son chris reese is now the director of outdoor athletic facilities and jim we talked to a lot of visitors that come to campus uh, from opposing schools, parents, they rave about these facilities. One of the neat things we see throughout our baseball season is when we have a doubleheader in between games, at some places we'll just kind of see, well, we start the second game. Well, here at Yellow Jacket Baseball Field, we'll see about five young and older guys come out and just prep this field to pristine condition for game number two of the doubleheader. You don't see that too often. You don't. You go on the road, and it's usually the home team that's prepping the field along with their coaches. But major league dimensions here, this is a big college ballpark. 330 feet down the lines, 402 to straightaway center field. And we have seen uh, some players who eventually went on to play in the professional ranks, including some major leaguers that have played right here on this field. That's been fun to watch, and uh, they have been uh, really talented players. You can tell that they're headed for a great baseball career. We've been blessed to have some of our Yellow Jacket players drafted and to work their way up into the minor leagues, especially the Ledbetter twins, David and Ryan. Our viewers will notice that behind home plate, there are 186 stadium seats that are available for the fans. Again, this is a spring sport uh, typically, so the weather is not as nice for the most part when we get to the spring schedule. But head coach Mike Manis and his ball club will be playing a limited fall schedule, uh, some exhibition games, some practices, and they will get things cranked up once we get into the spring of 2020. So that's the Yellow Jacket baseball field. You can see there in the background now moving towards the top left of your screen, the softball venue here, Lady Jacket Field, also built under the direction of Pete Reese, also opened in 2000. And like the baseball venue, uh, has an automatic irrigation system and, and drainage more than meets the NCAA requirements for a softball field. Pretty big dimensions as well there at the venue, 210 feet down the lines, 225 feet Uh, to center field Uh, you know a a minor thing about our fields you don't see fences like this when you go on the road no you don't and uh, we've uh, looked at that uh, center field fence out there 12 feet high at softball we've seen a few of our young ladies and some of our opponents put one out over that center field fence it's been great typically breezy here in the springtime (laughs) at cedarville on the north 40 as i like to talk about it Uh, this softball uh, venue is uh, really the northernmost part of the campus as you can get And head coach Russ Rose team will play some uh, exhibition games in the fall against Division I opponents all on the road. But their championship season, again, is in the spring. The regular season GMAC champions, uh, 2017 and 2018, and they were the GMAC tournament runner-up this past year. And, Jim, you were at that game. I was. That was up at uh, Hosted by Walsh in North Canton. And it was uh, that tournament had had uh, some weather issues but they were able to finally play it and get it and take care of Uh, our ladies gave a great effort not quite able to get the final trophy though if our viewers are ever on campus and want to take in a baseball or softball game you'd be interested to note that admission is free we do video stream select home games Uh, there's a lot of variables there the weather you know there's days where both teams are playing at home at the same time that kind of thing and uh, our video streams are on our stretch internet portal. We'll give you more details about that as we uh, circle the campus. That's our Lady Jacket softball field here in the northern part of the campus. Well, we're going to be making our way over to the soccer and uh, track and field complex, which is just west 
of our location here at the baseball field. We'll just say a quick word about the track because it uh, is a spring sport outdoors, that is. And uh, this facility has hosted a number of big meets, including some Olympic junior meets in the summer. But as you can tell there on the infield, it also has our soccer complex. This was, uh, again, built by the Reese brothers. It opened in 2002. The track actually opened in 2004. And uh, it's a nice size playing surface, 120 yards by 73 yards. There's also a video board that you can see there on the southwest part of the facility. That was installed in 2004. And Jim, we've seen a number of great matches here, college and high school combined. Definitely. And uh, firsthand look at some of our athletes, and we've had some players, top plays being put out there on the ESPN Top exactly. 10 for some fantastic late game goals and other great plays. And so that has been uh, really neat to see our athletes succeeding and getting some of that uh, extra publicity. The view are viewers are seeing right now is from the north you can see the seating there the bleachers there's a seating for at least 1200 fans and we have had some large crowds out here now there is an admission for our soccer matches and uh, those are uh, that information is available at cedarville tickets dot university tickets dot com and um, it's a dollar cheaper if you want to purchase them online. The NCAA has specific rules of who is allowed to get in complimentary or not, although Cedarville faculty, staff, and students are uh, granted free admission. But for all that information for tickets for home soccer and volleyball matches, you can see the location there on your screen, cedarvilletickets.universitytickets.com. Now, Jim, the very first home athletic event this year will be soccer. It's coming up next week. Actually, uh, kickoff, if you say for soccer terms, exactly. will be at 5.30 this coming Thursday, September 5th. The Yellow Jacket men will host Slippery Rock out of Pennsylvania. So it should be a great uh, opening home opener for Yellow Jacket Athletics. And they'll, they'll follow up with another game on Saturday. So that'll be a great weekend of men's soccer here. Yellow Jacket men have 11 home matches this year. Now, that's unusual. You're only uh, allowed to schedule 18 regular season matches. The Lady Jackets have eight. But uh, men have the current GMAC coach of the year in Brett Farrell. They had an outstanding year last year, finished second in the GMAC. And uh, the Lady Jackets are preseason selected number five under head coach Jonathan Mead. Their home opener will come up on September the 10th against Bellarmine. But again, this facility, when opponents come to our campus, and we hear it from the coaches, even for some of the players, they can't believe the condition the playing service is in. We were out here last weekend for a scrimmage for the Yellow Jacket men walking out on the field. It was uh, like top-notch carpeting that you'd find in a high-end home somewhere. It was just a beautiful, beautiful setting and a beautiful field, Mark. Irrigation and uh, during the track and field season, they will use that infield. Uh, you can see at the uh, far end there is uh, uh, s cement that where the cage goes where they'll do some uh, throwing of the discus right out there in the infield. So it's a multi-purpose facility and it gets a lot of terrific use and uh, again just part of the outstanding facilities that have been built here by the Reese's. Everything is pretty much uh, self-contained here in the Northport part of campus including our tennis complex and we will slowly make our way that direction. It's located east southeast from where the uh, track and field and soccer complex is located. You can see it there in the distance and this is the Johnson Murdoch tennis complex which was uh, opened in 1996, named after two Hall of Fame coaches here at Cedarville, Dr. Pamela Deal Johnson and Dr. Murray Murdoch, who uh, Jim and I are both graduates of Cedarville, and they, uh, they're they both still employed here, but well-respected individuals. Very much so. They uh, gave their life to Yellow Jacket, Lady Jacket Tennis here, and uh, definitely it's uh, neat to see them around, see them involved still on campus and still supporting the tennis program. Nine courts. As you can see there on your screen, and this venue has hosted a number of high-level tournaments, conference, district, regional. The uh, prestigious ITA Midwest Regional has been played here. The championship season for tennis is actually in the spring, though they will play a few matches in the fall. Both teams are now coached by Alan Edlin, and their home opener will come up on September the 14th. They will be playing Taylor but the bulk of their season will be played in the spring. Again, you know, I want to comment about the weather. It is gorgeous out here today, but the spring weather in Cedarville can be challenging even for tennis, and we've stood out there with some of that. Yeah, we have, and uh, 
I've had some incidents with my umbrella attacking me due to covering <laughs> our spring sports, especially uh, track and field. But tennis, definitely, you, they, thank goodness they have those wind curtains up to help cut down that breeze. They won't play in the rain, but they will play in the in the high winds, and they only move indoors if they absolutely have to. But that's the tennis venue, which uh, they have lights out there at night. The, the general public can come and play when the courts are open and uh, another outstanding facility here at Cedarville University. If you care to take in a tennis match, admission is free. We are not able to video stream those matches, but uh, they have a, a good following of fans, alums, that come out and watch them play. And uh, again, they'll be at home on September the 14th. Uh, you know, part of our fall season does involve volleyball, and we may take a, just a quick glance at where the Athletic Center is, which is further south of where we are located. But uh, the volleyball team is going to be starting things, well, next weekend with a pretty big match. Yes. Uh, we haven't hosted an Invitational for maybe almost 20 years here on campus to start the season, but the Cedarville invite will take place next weekend, Friday and Saturday, four teams, uh, including Cedarville. So look forward to some great volleyball competition. And uh, Friday night, it's that big night when they give out free T-shirts to the first 1,000 students, and generally that's a, a big night. And those those shirts will come in handy at a later match, I understand. Exactly. It'll actually be a whiteout night, but not till later in October, but that's when uh, the students are encouraged to show up wearing their white T-shirts. A few special promo nights coming up for volleyball and soccer, but uh, that's the athletic center. You can see the uh, field house that's attached to it just to the side. We also have some... Uh, some intramural facilities that are out here. Jim and I do not directly work with intramurals. That's under the direction of Mark Matthews. Extremely popular program here and among the outdoor facilities, they have some sand volleyball courts as well as a disc golf course, which uh, we understand Dr. Mark Gathany, Associate Professor of Biology, assisted with the design. And uh, it's an 18 hole course. I know they just added some holes over across the street at Cross Country, which we will get to there in just a moment, but uh, trying to give you an aerial view of where the sand volleyball courts are as well as disc golf. And, you know, you may have a casual interest in that, but Jim, your son-in-law is My big son in My son-in-law who golf. lives in California and he does come here to visit occasionally, that's one of the first things he asks about, like when can I get out there and uh, do some disc golfing? It's a huge sport uh, growing across the country and it's even been more uh, interesting to see the students here take part in the disc golf course. Again, that's open to the public and uh, take advantage of that. You might be able to see on your screen there some of those uh, concrete platforms that are next to the running path. Those are actually the tee boxes for the disc golf and uh, they have nine holes on this side of Route 72 and nine holes on the other side. We're going to make our way shortly over to the east part of uh, State Route 72 which is where the location is of, you know, I to say the word crown jewel may be a, a little uh, ex extensive to describe a cross-country course that way, but this is so unique that Cedarville has its own cross-country venue on campus. It is definitely rare, and I know, as you mentioned, we've traveled a lot. Very few places that we've even gone to for other sporting events have even thought about having their own cross-country course, and what a great advantage it is for our teams to practice there, but also to host large meets that a lot of visitors are able to come to campus and check out not only cross-country but also our other facilities. It's named after Elvin R. King for a reason. Coach King coached distance running here at Cedarville for 41 years. It's the Elvin R. King cross country course. And this sport has just been huge at Cedarville ever since they started. Our only NAIA national championship occurred in women's cross country in 2001. And this is just an incredible venue. 150 acres, also built by Pete Reese and Coach King and Gene Reese and so many meets, almost uh, too many to count. But two big meets coming up at Cedarville this year. It'll be the 29th annual Friendship Invitational on September the 14th. We'll have some 4,000 visitors on campus that day. No doubt, the friendship uh, well uh, liked and supported amongst the community and uh, those fans and runners will come driving down 72 and park about 100 buses and it's, it's a sight to see flags flying, camp set up. It's just really an exciting, exciting event. That day will start with the college races at 9.30 in the morning. So we have college men, then college women, then there are four high school races, two middle school races. That's what really brings in all the visitors. Mm -hmm. Now admission is free if you walk to the course. If you decide to park there, it's $8 per vehicle. That's very reasonable. They can park well over a thousand vehicles at this course. And we've been to a few 
cross country courses, this is extremely spectator friendly. It is very much so, and uh, you got to have your walking shoes on. But there are some great vantage points if you uh, hustle and move around the course. You can see a lot of great uh, perspective from the races that they take place. Now, another big meet coming up on the schedule is on September the 28th. It's the All Ohio Intercollegiate Championships. That's exactly what it is. Every college and university in the state of Ohio is invited to participate. There will be over 40 schools here. And yes, Ohio State has run here before. You name the Division Ones. Most of them will be here. And uh, it's really an exciting day, including all the Division I, Division II, Division III, NAI schools, a handful of junior colleges. And so in two consecutive or uh, spread out just two weeks apart, the Invitational and then the All-Ohio Intercollegiate Championships. Quickly mentioned our broadcast schedule, and we will try to video stream the cross-country meet for the All-Ohio. We do all the home volleyball, all the home soccer, and you can check out our internet portal at portal.stretchinternet.com slash Cedarville. And then uh, if you know of a prospective athlete as well that might be interested in Cedarville, you go on our website at yellowjackets.cedarville.edu. On every page, there is a link at the top that has to do with recruits, and you can fill out the information right there. And then we also want folks to follow us on our social media. And we're Everything CU Jackets, Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter. And you can follow us on our YouTube at Cedarville Athletics. So, uh I think it's been an interesting first tour, Jim. I think we uh, have pretty much made the trek around campus. It's been fun to try this out. Beautiful day. And uh, again, that social media, that's where it's at. If you want some inside look into Yellow Jack Athletics, we'd encourage you to check us out and follow us and uh, be one of our Cedarville family here at Yellow Jacket Athletics. So thanks for joining us on this first Cedarville University live tour. I'm Mark Womack. Alongside is Jim Clark. We hope to see you on campus real soon.